Hey everybody, it's Dr. Jensen and we are still on Module 1, Part 4, Personality Types. Although now we're in um, another part that's going to get into the second personality dimensions area, which is sensing or intuition. So again, um, this is not a right or wrong thing. So I will maximize my screen presence for the moment. This one tends to be a much more easier one to orient yourself on because it gets after things like information processing and problem solving. And I think those skills at this stage in your life are a lot more obvious to you than maybe they would be if you were younger or, or maybe in an earlier stage. So this, this one's hopefully a little more obvious and you can kind of be like, yep, that's exactly how I orient myself. That's where I fit. Um, if not, and you're a little bit more ambivalent, again, we have a chart to help you. So let's get after that chart before we get into sensing or intuition. Here it is, and I will move it up and down so we can see it better. But sensing or intuition, um, we'll start on the left with sensing. People who are sensing, they trust what is certain and concrete. So they are a person for facts and figures. Uh, they tend to also be really pretty um, regular news consumers, right? So they prefer just straight news rather than commentary um, and uh, not, wouldn't necessarily like talk radio unless it was like full of facts, right? <laughs> they like new ideas only if they have practical applications. So there has to be some purpose to everything we do. You know, they're not really as interested in um, going forward on something unless they can see it being useful. They value realism and common sense and uh, they manage their time well for the most part. They like to use and hone established skills. Again, this is comfortable for them and it makes sense for them because they value things that are useful. Uh, they tend to be specific and literal um, going into meaning um, with what was provided. And they also are a detail-oriented person. They give detailed descriptions. They present information in a step-by-step -step manner. And again, this goes into more of that methodical approach. Um, they want to be thorough and accurate. Being accurate really matters to people that are more on the sensing side. They're also very oriented to the present um, because that's the most important uh, orientation to have someone on sensing. If we move over to intuition, um, away from the practicality into the imaginary, <laughs> the intuition side is on the right. So again, you can use your, your highlighter tool and kind of start to mark which side you tend to be on. And then hopefully come up with a score at the end in sensing or intuition, there are only seven items. And so again, you should have at least one tiebreaker item so that you're not evenly split across the two groups. I wish we had nine. <laughs> nine might have been even a little more thorough. But for this one, seven covers it quite well. So that's the sensing side. Like, no, we don't need nine. Nine is more than we need. Common sense. And the intuition's like, ooh. Nine might be a lot of more fun and may give us more information. And a sensor's like, no, be practical, <laughs> right? So you may find yourself kind of battling through even something as simple as that. Should I use seven items to estimate myself or should I use nine? That gets after sensing or intuition. <laughs> so on the intuition side, they trust inspiration and inference. So they really like searching for meaning right? They don't have as much use for facts. Facts are useful, but they go well beyond the facts into trying to get practicality out of how facts are applied, even though that it's, it's hypothetical. They like new ideas and concepts for their own sake. They find energy out of inspiration and imagination. They value imagination and innovation. Uh, they're kind of naturally creative people where they can see things beyond their original use or their original application. They also like to learn new skills and they get bored or they're bored easily after mastering skills. So that's maybe something that is a little challenging for them. 
Um, they kind of like to be constantly stimulated, but stimulated in a way that creates lots of deep thought. Uh, they tend to be general and figurative, looking at kind of overviews and summaries. They don't really have much of a place for detail. Not to say they can't focus on details, but it's not as interesting to them. They like using metaphors and analogies. So examples go a long way with someone with intuition because it lets them use those application skills a little bit more. They present information through leaps in a roundabout manner. So this is someone that might not cut to the chase on an explanation, which would drive someone on the sensing side crazy. They just want steps, they want facts, and they want it to be over with. Um, someone on intuition might be describing what the painting's gonna look like and what you're after, and the sensor is gonna be like, where are the brushes? What colors are we using? How do we mix them? And so they're gonna really approach art from two different places, right? And you need both in order to create that piece of art. So it just depends on where you like to spend your time. Again, your preference. They uh, also are oriented toward the future. Again, they'd like to operate in the hypothetical, but you have to use some of the orientation to the present in order to make the prediction for the future. So I don't want to present people on the intuitive side as though they're aloof and they're not focused and they're distracted easy. Not the case. It's just that they, write, they like to think about their next steps rather than the current situation. And maybe it's a, str a strategic endeavor for them in some ways. But let's get after the slides and I'm going to disappear into the corner for this part. While some, uh, some people will focus on what is, while others tend to focus on what could be. Both are valid approaches to the world. So sensing describes the process of gathering data through the five senses, concentrating on what can be seen, heard, felt, smelled, or tasted. So they're very oriented on facts and observations because that's what's going to get them through to the next thing. Um, that's kind of the place they feel safe and secure and feel like they can be deliberate and get the outcome they're after. So even though we all use our senses, some people are just more interested in meanings relationships and possibilities based on facts rather than just simply the facts alone. So that's the intuitive. They trust their sixth sense more than the other five senses, looking between the lines for meaning in all things. So if we go into detail with sensors, again, they trust what can be measured or documented and focus on what is real and concrete, as well as their own personal experiences. They have a high degree of trust for themselves because they can keep track of that detail. They're very oriented to the present to concentrate on whatever is happening at the moment, looking carefully uh, at a situation to determine exactly what is going on. They're very good at observation, noticing and remembering facts like details. So they would be a great person to have on your team if that you had to keep track of a lot of stuff. Uh, sensors tend to be naturally inclined to do that. On the intuitive side, they're going to be focusing on implications and inferences. Again, valuing imagination and trusting their inscriptions and their hunches. And so they kind of operate in that sixth sense a lot, where they kind of can try to forecast what's about to happen. They're more oriented toward the future, and uh, they also tend to anticipate events easily. Um, and so it almost bothers people that they can do that, where they're like, how did you know that was going to happen? And they just have a sense of prediction. They're pretty good at it. They generally try to make things um, different or make differences rather than maintaining them the way they are. Um, again, because they kind of crave meaning and the possibilities. They look at a situation wanting to know what it means and what its consequences might be, because that's more informative to what they value. They're very good at interpreting facts or gleaning insights like patterns and big picture because overall they feel like that will most best position someone in their decision making um, to kind of get to a bottom line. So I just wanted to share a brief story that came out of your text while we look at uh, sensing or intuition. Sorry, wrong slide. So um, this story really has to do with two people approaching the world from two different places. 
So again, sensors are good at noticing and remembering a great many facts, and intuitives are best at interpreting facts and gleaning insights. So in the story in your text, you have Elizabeth, who is more of a sensor, and Jim, who is more of an intuitive. They work together at a cosmetics manufacturing company. One day, the president hastily called all department heads together for a rather tense meeting. He proceeded to run through some figures that painted a grim economic picture for the company. If things didn't improve, he said, employees would have to be laid off and other cost-cutting measures would be taken. The meeting ended abruptly and the department heads left in some confusion. Jim and, and, and Elizabeth immediately went behind closed doors to compare their notes. Elizabeth, the censor, recognized that the company was truly in financial trouble because she understood the facts and figures the president had quoted. As Elizabeth made additional calculations on her own, it was clear as it could be and made it even more alarming, more so than the meeting was. Although Jim really didn't have a head for numbers and intuitive, he too was quite alarmed. He had known something was wrong as soon as he'd walked into the meeting and had a sense that there was more going on than the president indicated. He noticed immediately that their usually easygoing president was agitated and that several department heads exchanged looks. He now remarked to Elizabeth that relations seemed strained between the president and vice president for research and development. Although nothing had been said about it in the meeting, Jim wondered if the company's anticipated new skincare line was still being developed, if it might be in trouble and would it have a drastic effect on the bottom line. So as it turned out, both Jim and Elizabeth were correct. A few days later, the president broke the bad news, and for completely different reasons, as we've seen, neither Jim nor Elizabeth was surprised. Although they each had focused on different kinds of data, uh, the information they processed was a little bit different, they had both arrived at the same conclusion. While sensors like details and see clearly what is actually before them, intuitives have very little interest in details and tend to look for those underlying patterns or go for that big picture futuristic thinking. So a sensor and an intuitive can see exactly the same situation very differently, which means that they'll recollect things differently too. So again, that's just a way to think about how both orientations are really needed in the world to make very focused decisions. So again, our text is very well written, very easy to read, and I hope you turn to these examples to kind of give yourself a sense of what you would be doing. And we'll see you in the next lecture.